Welcome to UND Sports Extra. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. On tonight's show, the UND football team stays in the FCS playoff hunt thanks to a win over Northern Colorado. It heads to San Luis Obispo, California this week in the final game of the regular season. Head coach Bubba Schweigert is with us in just a few seconds. Also on tonight's show, men's basketball, women's hockey, and a UND, UND volleyball team, rather, that's on its way to the Big Sky postseason tournament. Well, North Dakota dominated Northern Colorado 45-14 last Saturday to improve to 6-4 and four in the season and stay in the conversation for the FCS playoffs. Head coach Bubba Schweigert returns. Coach, congratulations on the win. A really dominant effort by your football team in all three phases of the game. Yeah, thanks, Dan. You know, I think uh, our coaches really had a good plan going into the game on special teams, offense, and defense. And our guys really executed the plan well and just came out with a different type win than we've had this year so far. You know, Bubba, a week ago in this show, you said the teams that are winning the turnover battles are the teams winning most games in, in the league. The last two games, you've won the turnover battle and you've won big games. Big difference in the results, yeah. and especially Saturday, you know, to have five turnovers and uh, not have any ourselves protect the ball. Very good performance by our guys. Well, Bubba, you talk about playing meaningful games in the month of November. You're doing that. You'll do it again Saturday. But when we come back, we'll take a look at UND's win over Northern Colorado. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota, RidelCars.com and Farmers Union Insurance. It was senior day this past Saturday at the Alaris Center as North Dakota hosted Northern Colorado. Bubba, 13 seniors playing their final regular season game inside the Alaris Center. And again, they were sophomores when you and your staff took over, so they've uh, gone through the transition for you. Yeah, a great group of guys. You know, transition isn't easy for guys. Uh, and they've done a really good job of buying in to what we want to do and the vision for UND football. And was happy to see us get a really good performance to send them out on their way in the regular season. Right, and a lot of those seniors made key plays in the game. And Northern Colorado's second play from scrimmage, you get a turnover, and it's a pick six, a defensive touchdown. Yeah, something we hadn't done this year yet. And Brian makes a really good play. Safety put him in good position there. And great way to start the game. No kidding. Brian Labatt with the pick six, 7 nothing early. Uh, you just hounded Jacob Nip all day long. Yeah, we thought that was going to be pretty key to the game. A young quarterback who was playing very well. You know, get some pressure on him and get him confused a little bit. And our guys did an excellent job of that. Well, and you brought a lot of pressure from a lot of different directions against him. Yeah. Excellent design by our staff. But once again, the players executed very well, too. And uh, the run game for them, uh, Trey Reek, who had coming off a big game, you contained him well as well. Yeah, I believe they only had uh, about 30 yards rushing going into the fourth quarter. So we had to win that battle again, you know, force teams to throw the football. Keaton Studsrud, my goodness, was he sharp on Saturday. He started the game 12 of 13, finished 13 of 16 overall. Yeah, we thought he'd uh, play better this week because he was feeling much better health-wise and, and sure performed well, and that's how we need him to perform, you know, to be sharp and keep moving those chains. Seems like he was uh, reading very well, and he was really accurate in his throws on Saturday as well. Yeah, I think, you, you know, you see his hard work in the film study and all that pay off in games like this. He just made so many good decisions, both in the run game and the passing game. Uh, how about a 17-play, 98-yard drive here? And this is a great call as you get to the goal line and convert on the touchdown. Yeah, Coach Rudolph coming up with a touchdown play, as we call him. And yep. Very good, and I thought that was really a momentum changer after we had gotten a touchdown called back in the game due to penalty. Right, so that 98-yard drive, you're up 14-0. Nip here again, feeling pressure, throws it up. Will Rattel with the pick. Good play by Will. You know, he's on his guy and just uh, comes off his man and makes a great catch right, right along the sideline. Yeah, you got this running back, John Santiago, who's seeming to put one game after another on, on the board here, Bubba. Another big game from Santiago Saturday. Yeah, I think he was real patient Saturday and waited for the holes to open up. And then, uh, obviously, when he gets in the open field, he's pretty elusive and fast. You know, he has eight runs now this season, over 45 yards, and seven of those have been touchdown runs. Here's an 81-yarder right here. Yeah, and the guy's just blocking well in the perimeter. You yeah. see, we get man on man, and, and John, you know, when he gets that little crease, he can really accelerate, and he's got to outrun the free safety here, and he's able to do that. Great blocking, though, by your guys up front there. Santiago now with 1,342 yards on the season. That's number five all-time for a uh, single-season, regular-season record. 
You obviously did not want to kick to Northern Colorado's deep return men, so you did a good job short kicking and covering short kicks. Yeah, Javen Butler back, and he's been a good special teams player for us, so that's a big play, and just really wanted to keep it out of their top guy's hands. First forced, rather, five turnovers on the day. Did you see some things come into this game where you thought, you know, we have an opportunity to take some away from the Bears? Well, I think when you're in good position, you have an opportunity to force more turnovers, but here's a oh. big hit by Cole, and he oh. jars the ball loose. Brian Labatt, a big day, two and a half tackles for loss, interception, fumble recovery, and a sack. And then on your ensuing drive, you're going to go back to work here. And, again, Keaton Studsrud making the most out of his 13 completions on the day. Very good play, and Josh keeps the play alive, uh, moving the chains. Then Studsrud will uh, hit Luke Mathewson. This will go for 19 yards. And then following this, you're going to lose running back Brady Oliveira to an injury, and he had been running well, too. Uh, how's he looking this week here, Coach? Well, it was a little bit better than we thought, but going to be uh, real questionable for Saturday. Okay. And I, I think another sign of how well your offensive line was playing Saturday, it didn't matter if it was John Santiago, Brady Oliveira, Kyle Norberg, Dewari Smith, they were clearing holes for everybody Saturday. Yeah, getting man-on-man and assignments are t- uh, you know tough to do with a lot of different looks by the defense, but our guys really move people well. And, and we got some other guys a chance to contribute here. You see Kyle carrying the ball and... Awari Smith, a number of carries, so that was uh, great for our team to get more guys involved. No doubt about it. Uh, Norberg's carries, of course, have gone down as Santiago and Oliveira have picked up the load, but he ran well Saturday. Yeah, he kept moving the chains and got into the end zone here. And uh, You know, you just need depth this time of the year in your football team. Yeah. 35 nothing at the half, pretty much a perfect half for your football team. It was pretty good, you know, yeah. but we had to come out and establish momentum in the second half. All right, let's take a look at second half highlights here. and. More pressure on the quarterback as you would uh, dial up some pressure. Noah Johnson getting into the uh, act here. Kyle Woodsmall again. Uh, and, and you forced the quarterback change in this football game. That's how much pressure you brought against Nip. Yeah, you know, uh, the guys just really got after him. And, and if you can get that guy uncomfortable, it's really hard to move the football. So it was great for our guys, and it seemed like the good old UND defense was back. No kidding. Six quarterback sacks, six quarterback hits. Here's Josh Seibel, a 21-yard punt return. Somewhat of a scary moment here because in the middle of the field, John Santiago will take a pop to the head. He was a little shaken up here after this. Yeah, you know, we wanted to limit his uh, carries in the second half and really wanted him out of the game and just went to our two deep punt return to catch the ball and uh, just got to do a better job of managing our, our team at that point. 400 yards rushing, Coach, for your team for a second straight game. Well, that's who we want to be, yeah. and we also got really good balance, and I think that kept them honest here. You see Keaton getting some by creating a play, uh, scrambling on a pass play. Kyle Norberg, 15 rushes, 80 yards. That was a career high on the day. Reed Tobenheim is going to boot a field goal here to put you up 38 nothing. So uh, really, you know, at 35 nothing, this game looked like it was over. Yeah, but you got to come out in that third quarter and, you know, get some points again, I think, to get them on their heels and, and we were, we were on our team at halftime. we got to come out and play well because we want to play entire four quarters. Deion Harris uh, with the pick. How do you like that number? Nine turnovers in your last two games. Well, it's helping us, you know, and especially the way our offense is controlling the ball. Those turnovers, that we get it back to our offense. We're able to take time off the clock and score a lot of points. Awari Smith, career-high 14 rushes, career-high 100 yards rushing. Uh, now he, he's transitioning to more of a wide receiver, but – Today you needed him at running back, so you played him at running back, correct? Yeah, it was good, and I think you could see him gain confidence as his carries increased, and, and the touchdown run was a real good run. And he's got really good speed, so we just right. got to get him once again in the open field, and uh, we were really happy with his performance. Yeah, Wari Smith uh, back in Michigan before he came to UND, a guy who was clocked in that 10-6, 10-7, 10-8, 100 meter dash. So uh, certainly a guy with good wheels. 45-14. Dominant effort, Santiago and Smith over 100 yards, Norberg approaching 100 yards. Keaton Studsrud was a great caretaker of your offense on Saturday. Here's what your players are saying afterwards. This is definitely a fun way to end my career at the Alera Center for sure. Um, we didn't really let them do anything on, on offense for the first half, not really till the fourth quarter, so it was a good way to go out for sure. It was fun. Everybody. It seemed like they were doing their job, so that's that's the outcome when you got guys all on the same page, all, all playing as hard as they can, um, getting after them. You know, our style of defense is to get after the quarterback, and that's what we did. We played our brand of football today. We had an extra week to work on the plan. Uh, felt really confident coming in offensively. Uh, we moved the ball. Another, uh, I think we ran for 400 as a team, so that was the second week in a row. 
Uh, lots of guys move, carrying the ball. Um, yeah, that's that's our brand of, of football offensively. We want to be playing meaningful football uh, this time of year, so it's it's good to be in that situation for us. Um, and we're just we're just going to keep grinding through next week. Coach, uh, how have you seen your perimeter blocking in the run game move forward here in the last few weeks? Well, it's just been so much better, and uh, we really challenge our fullbacks, our tight ends, and receivers to block on the perimeter because that's where you get the explosive plays in the run game. And you know, it doesn't happen by accident. You got to right. practice a lot and work on it, and uh, we're making really good progress there. Coach, you're back a little bit later to preview the Cal Poly game coming up next. We've got men's basketball and women's hockey here on UND Sports Extra. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota, RydellCars.com, and Farmers Union Insurance. The North Dakota men's basketball team opened the regular season this past week, and we got a good look and a good preview of many of the newcomers. North Dakota against Minnesota Morris. True freshman Cortez Seals, good-looking freshman out of North Scott High School in Iowa, knocks down the two. Then Quinton Hooker to Drick Bernstein, the transfer from Denver University, lays the alley-oop in. Here is Corey Baldwin, another newcomer. He finished with 17. North Dakota had six players in double figures. Of course, Quinton Hooker, the leader of this basketball team. Here he penetrates the paint. Sweet finish at the rim. North Dakota led 45-24 at the half. Connor Avance, another newcomer, pulls down the board. Baldwin breaking, using the window for two. And Seals was outstanding. He played 35 minutes in his North Dakota debut, led North Dakota with 27 points on 11 of 15 field goal attempts. He can hurt you in a lot of different ways. And North Dakota goes on to win 99-69. UND will play at Wisconsin this evening. A little Big Ten competition. Women's hockey, UND and Ohio State over the weekend at the Ralph. On Saturday, first period, Sam Hansen sets up Jordan Hampton. Her first UND goal, UND's up 1-0 after one. Second period, a lot of traffic in front of Shelby, Amsley, Benzie, and eventually Claudia Kepler would score the goal for the Buckeyes. The game is tied at one after two. In the third period, UND would take the lead. Becca Kohler will drive wide here and set up Amy Mankey for her sixth of the year. North Dakota led it 2-1 in the third, but the Buckeyes scored two goals over the last six minutes and 52 seconds for the 3-2 win. So UND was looking for the split on Sunday afternoon in the first period, just like in the series opener. UND scores first from the point. Hallie Krizaniak's third of the year. UND is up 1-0. North Dakota then takes advantage of some sloppy Buckeye defense. Kohler finding Menke, who is having a tremendous season. Forehand here, and it's 2-0 North Dakota after one. UND adds to its lead in the second period thanks to a pretty play. Tape to tape passing down low, and it's Tonskinen with her first of the year. Vilma Tonskinen, the youngster from Finland. North Dakota's up 3-0. In the third period, Ohio State would get on the board, but Menke would answer back her second of the game. She leads North Dakota with eight goals on the season. 4-1 is the final there. We're back with UND volleyball coach Mark Pryor here on UND Sports Extra. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota, RydellCars.com, and Farmers Union Insurance. Welcome back. The North Dakota volleyball team is stretching its season to the Big Sky postseason tournament. Head coach Mark Pryor is back. Coach, thanks for your time. Your team makes the postseason tournament. Another 20-win season. A couple good things here as you head to the postseason. It is. Uh, we're excited. You know, we always talk about in August, our only goal is to be able to get a chance to play meaningful matches in November. Well, you know, our regular season's over with. Now we have a one-day season that starts Thursday. If we do well in that yeah. season, we get a one-day season Friday. Well, certainly a uh, familiar opponent awaits you in the opening round of the Big yes. Sky Tournament in Flagstaff, <laughs> and that would be Idaho, yes. a team you just played last Thursday, a team that this season, for the first time ever, you swept within the Big Sky Tournament. You like this matchup with Idaho? Um, you know, I like it. Uh, I think they um, might not like it as much. Yeah. Uh, I think for us, it's going to be start. We got to start fast. Really start fast and let them start thinking. We've got to play North Dakota again. 
you know? Mm -hmm. So that's really what, I mean, we're hopeful. We've got a couple things that we do schematically they struggle with. They do some things that we struggle with. It's going to depend on who's going to show up that day. Yeah, well, let's take a look at your highlights uh, of your win against Idaho last Thursday night. And uh, what are the things as we look at these highlights that you hope to carry into Thursday's match in the postseason? Well, I think the first thing is we started exceptionally fast in the first set. Uh, that really made it difficult. And then our middles really, really did a good job of running behind the setter. Uh, their middles do a good job of moving in their right, not exceptionally well to their left. So that means we've got to run behind the setter a lot. That's a lot of Chelsea off of one foot, and that's a lot of faith just kind of running behind. Um, if we can do that, we're going to have a chance to score and be pretty efficient. All right. Uh, Julia Spacek got in the act on uh, Thursday. And, again, you're having to get contributions from your iron nine, as we call them, <laughs> with your injury situation, right? Pretty, pretty much. You know, it, it's kind of one of those things that uh, they just go, they get after it, and they're like, hey, you know, if it's going to happen, I've got to make it happen. And we love that, you know, individual uh, extreme ownership mentality that they're going to take care of their spots. In this match, Mackenzie Hart uh, had 24 digs. She set the UND career dig record, and and her numbers uh, are, are phenomenal. I, I believe you were quoted as saying uh, the biggest metamorphical size they choose to fill. That word is metaphorical, metaphorical. not meta metamorphical. But of yes, uh, <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have tried that word with you sitting here. Well, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be tough to fill those shoes, but she's done a really, really good job for us, and uh, her numbers are just absurd. Yeah, I mean that's all you can say. Yeah, <laughs> and she's put the career numbers now in places where it's going to be very difficult, difficult for anyone. To yeah. surpass those numbers. There, there's no doubt. It's someone that's going to have to come in and, and play a lot early on to have a chance to catch that. Right. All right. Uh, she's one of only three players that you'll lose as you look ahead to next year. I know you don't, don't like looking ahead, but we are. Right, right. Uh, you know, we're going to miss uh, all three of those players for different reasons. Lauren Clark, Kristen Geisbrecht, and Hart. Yes, they're, they, and they all do great things for us. Uh, I think if you look at... Um, you know, if you look at how we played this weekend, all three played crucial roles. It's just going to be important for some of our new kids, some of our red shirts, and our returners just to understand they don't need to be the next Kenzie, the next Lauren, the next Kristen. They've got to be a good version of themselves mm -hmm. just to kind of take up a little bit of that slack. All right, so you've got Idaho Thursday morning at 1130 Grand Forks time in the opening round of the Big Sky Tournament. Uh, you, you're not a superstitious guy, though, so to you, having – beating them twice this year and 4-0 and oh now all time against Idaho. That's not a big deal to you? Uh, you know, if we're 5-0, it won't be a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think so. It's one of no. those that you show up and play. Right. You show up and right. play. And the opportunity, considering, again, the challenge that you've faced here in the second half of the season with your injuries, I think, is a great opportunity. Oh, we're, just, we're just grateful we get a chance to get in there. We like our first-round <laughs> matchup. We like the side of the bracket. So we're excited about it. I mean, it's going in. I'm like, I think this could not have laid out any better for us. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty grateful for that. All right, Coach, good luck in Flagstaff. And uh, we'll recap the season next week here on UND Sports Extra. That sounds good. Thanks. Thursday, 11.30 a.m., North Dakota, Idaho, in the Big Sky Postseason Tournament. We're back with more after this. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota, RydellCars.com and Farmers Union Insurance. Welcome back. We are rejoined by head coach Bubba Schwagert. Bubba, final regular season game at Cal Poly this weekend. You're six and four. A win would get you to seven four. You would have an argument to be a playoff team, but you, you got to win this game. It's a must win for you. Bottom line. Yes, we do, and we're approaching it as a playoff game. And our guys need to have great focus at practice because we're playing a hot team in the Big Sky. They've scored 58 and 38 points the last two weeks, and yeah. really playing good football. Yeah. How about the opportunity that's there for you, knowing if you do win, you could extend your season in just your second season with you and your staff? Well, it's exciting for the team, exciting for our staff. This is what we want UND football to be about, playing meaningful games in November and 
winning Big Sky Championships, getting to FCS playoffs. That's really our vision, and we're committed to that. Cal Poly, triple option offense. They lead the nation in rushing more than 400 yards a game. What's the challenge against the triple option and defending it for your team, Bubba? It's assignment football. You really got to have great eyes and great discipline and then tackle well in space. Chris Brown, their quarterback, last week he rushed for over 100 yards. He threw three touchdown passes, and he caught a touchdown pass. Yeah, he's been a good player in the league for a long time. He's really playing good football at this point in the season. When's the last time that you or you and your staff that you've been associated with have had to scheme for a triple option type of offense? It's been a while. Well, for me, it's been 1999. I think Coach Schmidt got a little bit of this at Crookston High School. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're working hard on it and studying it, and we'll put together a good plan. All right. How about you running the football against their defense? What kind of patterns and trends are you seeing there? It's very key that we do that. You know, we cannot uh, let their offense stay on the field, and we got to keep them off the field once we get that opportunity. All right. All right, Bubba. Good luck this weekend at Cal Poly. We'll review the game next week here on the show. A reminder that you can see college women's hockey this weekend here on Midco Sports Network. North Dakota and Minnesota Duluth coming your way Friday, November 20th. Then men's hockey, North Dakota and St. Cloud State on Saturday evening. That again, coming up this weekend here on Midco Sports Network. We invite you to stay tuned for North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. Friday, November 20th, then men's hockey, North Friday, November 20th, then men's